Montana on Wednesday became the first state in America to ban TikTok. Hey, guys. Bye, guys. Right? Everybody on TikTok does that. Hey, guys. Well, they banned TikTok. Great work, Montana Republicans. Anyone can buy a gun in Montana, but your citizens are finally safe from makeup tips for your hamster. The bill is expected to be challenged in the courts on the notion that it violates freedom of speech. Gee, you think banning TikTok is a violation of freedom of speech? Really? Once again, Republicans complain about the cancel culture and how freedom of speech is under assault. But it is the fascists in America who loathe freedom of speech. Republicans are fascists, which means they only want freedom of hate speech. TikTok banned in Montana. You're listening to The David Feldman Show. You happy, self-actualized hump. Well, I almost didn't go on tonight. I am, as you can see, an emotional wreck. My friend Ariana is not doing well. Her husband, Tom, okay, he's not really her husband, but they've been living together for eight years. Uh, Tom and Ariana have been living together for eight years, and Ariana just found out that Tom has been sleeping with her, with her friend Raquel, and... I mean, between Ariana's skin cancer scare and the eating disorder and now this, I, I just don't know how she gets out of bed every morning. It, it's very upsetting to watch a close friend go through through this. And she's not really a close friend. Well, you know, I think she's a friend. You know, she's one of the stars of Vanderpump Rules and my life revolves around it. They're almost like friends to me, more like family. And I care very deeply about these people and just Ariana, just just stay strong, okay? On Tuesday, Sherelle Parker won the Democratic nomination for mayor of Philadelphia, uh, thereby making her pretty much the next mayor of Philadelphia since Philadelphia is run by Democrats. Sherelle Parker will be the 100th and first she will be the first mayor of Philadelphia. She will be the 100th mayor and the first female mayor of Philadelphia. Parker is a woman and she's African-American, but she's a centrist. Just like Mayor Adams here in New York City, she's African-American, but that doesn't make her a lefty. It makes her a Democrat. While she got the support of the unions, Parker ran promising to get tough on crime and bring back stop and frisk, a highly discredited police procedure where cops walk up to primarily young, poor black men, ask what they're doing, demand to see ID, and then tell them to empty their pockets. The cops always find something and arrest them. Not only is stop and frisk unconstitutional, it doesn't stop crime. It just stops young black men while they're walking down the street. Cops aren't going to stop and frisk a real gangbanger, a real armed criminal, because that's too dangerous. Derek Chauvin put his knee on George Floyd's neck because George Floyd was never any threat to anyone in America. Cops mostly, mostly pick on the weak. They protect property and terrorize, terrorize the weak. Brian Cornell, the CEO of retail giant Target, said he expects his company to lose $1 billion this year due to shoplifting. Bullshit. Uh, the CEO of Target, Cornell, blamed, quote unquote, organized criminals raiding his stores and making off with products but when pressed on the subject, said it was impossible to calculate how much of his merchandise has been stolen by shoplifters. He can't really tell, he said, the difference between sh the, the, the merchandise that disappeared because of shoplifting and the merchandise that has disappeared because it's been damaged by employees or never showed up. I'm not buying this new shoplifting scare. Yes, there have been some highly publicized vir viral videos of people shoplifting. 
But there are many, many reasons a big box store's inventory disappears, and it has nothing to do with shoplifting. In fact, I suspect it has absolutely nothing to do with shoplifting. Shoplifting is what you say to divert attention away from the real crimes being committed at the big box stores, like wage theft. Merchandise might be disappearing, might not be. I think if it's disappearing, not, not because of the shoplifters, it's because purchasing agents for these big box retail stores are unsupervised. They pad their orders. They pay for things they know are never going to arrive. They get their kickback and then blame the missing inventory on shoplifters. They're claiming merchandise that was never there has been stolen. If shoplifting is that big a problem, and I don't believe it is, then hire more people. When a customer enters a store, make sure you have customer service. Greet the customer and walk around with them and help them shop. But you don't even need to do that because shoplifting isn't a problem. There are surveillance cameras capturing everything we do inside these big box stores. We know who's stealing stuff. It's all on video. Nobody, for the most part, is shoplifting. Elizabeth Holmes, the founder of biotechnology company Theranos, will begin serving her 11-year prison sentence starting May 30th after a judge this week rejected her motion to postpone the sentence until after her appeal. Holmes was found guilty of criminal conspiracy and fraud when she made false claims about what her blood testing company could do. In 2014, Holmes became a billionaire when Theranos was valued at $9 billion after she had raised more than $400 million in venture capital. They're so busy talking about shoplifting. The, the, this is the real crime. At least she got caught. Uh, she raised $400 million in venture capital, even though there was not a shred of evidence her technology worked. And the federal government kept raising red flags. The, the FDA, Medicare and Medicaid kept saying, this don't work. But she was able to raise hundreds of millions of dollars after trusted luminaries such as Henry Kissinger, former Secretary of State under George, uh, Ronald Reagan, George Shultz, and General James Mattis, who later became Trump's Secretary of Defense, they all vouched for her. The experts, the experts like George Shultz, Henry Kissinger, James Mattis, the experts, they all claim to, they said to investors, we vetted her. We looked at the technology and examined the patents. And Theranos is a terrific investment. And then some of them got jobs as board of directors on Theranos. The experts, listen to the experts. As I reported yesterday, far-right Christian nationalist Republican Congresswoman Lauren Boebert, who was narrowly reelected last year as a family values conservative, is divorcing her husband of two decades. We are now finding out that Jason Boebert, her soon-to-be ex-husband, who did time for exposing his penis to a 16-year-old minor. Did I ever mention that Lauren Boebert's husband, the family values couple, Lauren Boebert, who calls America uh, a Christian nation, did I ever mention that her husband did time for exposing his penis to a 16-year-old minor? Uh, anyway, he, uh, when the divorce papers were signed this week, uh, two, uh, I'm sorry, they were signed uh, earlier, earlier, I think it was a couple of weeks ago. He didn't take too kindly to the man serving him the divorce papers. Bobert, Jason Bobert, reportedly shouted obscenities. Hmm, how strange, how it's not something the husband of a congresswoman should be doing. He screamed obscenities at the process server and then let his dogs loose on him. Jason Bobert was reportedly drinking a beer and cleaning his gun while the papers were being served. These are good people. 
cleaning your gun and drinking beer. That's the perfect combination for a moron. Beers and a gun. What could possibly go wrong? More on that bombshell Rudy Giuliani sexual assault lawsuit. Former Attorney General Bill Barr on Wednesday suggested that he wouldn't be surprised if Rudy Giuliani tried to sell presidential pardons at $2 million a piece. If you remember in court papers for that sexual assault lawsuit filed against Giuliani on Monday, his accuser said Giuliani told her that as President Trump's personal attorney, he was able to sell pardons, pardons from the outgoing President Donald Trump for millions of dollars. Former Attorney General Bill Barr during the interview on Fox News said, I hope he didn't do that, but I just don't know. Strippers at a nightclub in North Carol, uh, strippers at a nightclub in North Hollywood, California, have become the first topless dancers to have union representation. After a 15-month battle with the owner of Star Garden Topless Dive Bar, the strippers will now be represented by the Actors' Equity Association. The Actors' Equity Association. Well, they're strippers. It's like it's not like any of them would want to join SAG. In two th- yeah, I went for that. In 2018, the California State Supreme Court ruled that strippers are not independent contractors and are employees, thereby creating an opportunity for them to form a union. In 1997, strippers working San Francisco's Lucky Lady formed the Exotic Dancers Union, but the club later folded along with the union. You know, this all gets a lot of attention. Oh, the strippers are forming a union. It's a golden age of union organize, organizing bullshit. There are fewer union members today than there were last year. America right now has the smallest percentage of union membership in 100 years. All this talk about strippers unions, Amazon unionizing, Starbucks unionizing, And by the way, Starbucks still hasn't recognized any of those unions, nor has Amazon. And now we're, you know, the writers are on strike. Uh, We're not creating the labor movement we need. You can't have a union movement without class consciousness. We need class consciousness. Stop identifying with the rich. Stop identifying with management. They're not on our team. According to a new Gallup survey, Americans are more depressed than ever before. Nearly 30 percent of those polled say they have been diagnosed with depression sometime during their life. That's 10 percent higher than how people responded to that question back in 2015. This country is not working when that many people are depressed. Nearly 18 percent of Americans now say they are being treated currently for depression. If you or somebody you know is suffering from depression, call your health care professional immediately and tell them to stop practicing medicine until Joe Biden signs Medicare for all into law. Eventually, we have to start blaming the doctors. The doctors could just stop working, only treat, just show up at the emergency room and refuse to practice medicine until we get Medicare for all. Eventually, the doctors have to be held responsible for how we're all being ripped off by the health insurance companies. We have to put the health insurance companies out of business and the doctors have to get on board. Ultimately, they're the ones failing to make the diagnosis of a cancer in our society, and that is called for-profit health insurance. I'm starting to blame the doctors for remaining silent on all this. Joe Biden is quietly putting together a team to, uh, (laughs) I like that, little Photoshop. Uh, Joe Biden is quietly putting together a team to investigate America's rarely talked about shortage of drugs. Very few people are talking about the shortage of drugs here in America, legal drugs. Forget the fentanyl 
problem. We have a drug shortage. A new report shows that drug shortages were up 30 percent last year. Many of these drugs in short supply are life saving cancer treatments and eye drops that literally keep people from going blind. This is not being reported. There are serious shortages of drugs here in the United States, and people who are very sick are not getting chemotherapy and dying. A Senate Homeland Security hearing held in March of this year revealed that the FDA has difficulty unraveling the pharmaceutical industry's opaque supply chain, a purposely opaque supply chain with critical medicines, life-saving medicines getting manufactured in China and India to maximize profits at the expense of American lives. Now, 90% of all drugs here in America are generic. And most companies that produce generic drugs are struggling to remain profitable. Well, it's time to nationalize Big Pharma. It's time to nationalize the drug companies. We finance their R&D. We might as well own them. We're the wealthiest country in the history of civilization. And the best medical advice anyone can provide is don't get sick. Great country you got here. Well, on Wednesday, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis signed a new law forbidding anyone over the age of 18 from using a bathroom that doesn't correspond with the sex they were assigned at birth. I, was, I didn't even know I was assigned a sex. I, I, I didn't know that. Violators now in Florida will be charged with criminal trespassing. Odd that Ron DeSantis would be so obsessed with bathrooms given he doesn't give a shit about anything other than himself. This is the most constipated man in America, and he's obsessing with bathrooms. When has he ever needed to go to the bathroom, that tight ass? The law is impossible to enforce. It requires bathroom vigilantes to stand guard inside bathrooms and demand you show proof of gender. That sounds like a pickup line to me. Bathroom vigilantes. This is a right-wing dystopian nightmare, essentially designed to grant bigots in Florida carte blanche to harass anyone who doesn't look like them, or more likely, permission to harass someone that they're secretly attracted to. This bill is like the one North Carolina passed in 2016, resulting in the NBA moving their all-star game out of the state to protest the bathroom bill. There, was, uh, there were several boycotts of North Carolina after, this, after their bathroom bill. And because the rest of the country began to boycott North Carolina, the Republican governor wasn't reelected a year later, and that evil bathroom bill was repealed. So what is it going to take, liberals, to stand up to Ron DeSantis's Florida? When he's not signing anti-LGBTQ community bills, he's arresting African Americans for trying to vote and forbidding the teaching of black history in our schools. Now, it's really easy for liberals to call for a boycott of North Carolina. But where are the brave voices calling for a boycott of Florida? Florida is no longer a swing state. It's red. Now, Disney World has done its share standing up to DeSantis. So I don't think a boycott of Disney World is in order. If anything, we should be supporting Disney. But the rest of Florida... Which side are you on? I'd like to know which side these corporations and businesses in Florida and, and cities and tourist attractions, which side are you on? 
Right now, the liberals in America are remaining silent on a boycott of Florida. And because liberals in America refuse to stand up to Florida like we stood up to North Carolina, Ron DeSantis, this fascist bigot, thinks he can become president. It starts with not giving Florida our money. DeSantis has had a series of bill signing ceremonies this week in which he outlawed gender transition care for minors. This week, he officially forbid children from attending drag shows. Big problem. Big, big problem in Florida. You know, they're, they're, they can't educate their kids. Uh, highest dropout rate in America. But they're making sure children uh, can't attend drag shows. And Ron DeSantis, thank God, He's put an end to the use of pre preferred pronouns in schools. That makes for a really smart citizenry. These kids are going to be really well educated. After one of the bill signing ceremonies this week inside a Tampa Christian school, he went to a, a Christian school to sign one of these bills. Separation of church and state, anyone? DeSantis said after signing the bill, we need to let our kids just be kids, right? Let kids just be kids, no matter how that kid was born. Just let that kid be the kid he was meant to be. And then if he turns out that he was meant to be someone we don't approve of, let's continue to create conditions that will hasten that kid's suicide. DeSantis is a sadist. That's what fascists are. They're sadists. As a JAG officer, he was there at Gitmo while they were waterboarding, and he did nothing to stop it. DeSantis then called Florida a citadel of normalcy. Normalcy. Let's see how his kids turn out. Florida's Department of Education will be conducting an on-site investigation of the school where a fifth grade teacher showed her class Strange World, a Disney film featuring a gay character. The Office of Professional Practices of Florida's State Education Department will be interviewing the students who suffered through the film, as well as the parents of those kids to determine what types of PTSD the movie inflicted on them. This is not a joke. Because of the investigation, the teacher who showed the Disney film announced that she would finish the term but wouldn't return in the fall. Governor Ron DeSantis's parental rights and education law gives parents more of a say in their child's education because that's, that's what I want. Florida parents setting syllabuses. Syllabi? Syllabi? This is why I'm not a teacher. I don't know the plural of syllabus. You don't want any parents determining what gets taught and doesn't get taught in school. The parental rights and education law also forbids teachers from discussing gender and sexual identity before the eighth grade. That is just insane. Almost as insane as showing a classroom of fifth graders a Disney film. Why is a teacher showing her students a Disney film in the middle of the school day? Phone in sick if you don't want to work. Uh, we're now getting reports that the Texas legislature just passed a ban on hormone and puberty blocking treatments and surgeries for transgender children. The bill expected to be signed by the governor, Greg Abbott, would make Texas the largest state in America to persecute the LGBTQ community. Meanwhile, in Texas, a one-year-old boy was shot by his four-year-old brother. The child, as well as Texas's incredibly lax gun laws, are expected to survive. But focus on puberty blockers, you idiots. The leading cause of death in America, guns. Look that up, Google that. Leading cause of death in America for children, I'm sorry, the leading cause of death for children in America is guns. 
Google that. It used to be car accidents. It used to be cancer. Now, the leading cause of death for children in America, guns. But these Republican deviants in Texas are obsessing on puberty blockers. It's a nation run by morons. How did we let the morons take over? Worthless, craven morons. In an interview on CNBC, Elon Musk called working from home, quote unquote, morally wrong. Working from home is morally wrong. This from the same man who was just subpoenaed by the Virgin Islands in their Jeffrey Epstein lawsuit. You're listening to The David Feldman Show, davidfeldmanshow.com. Anything you want, as long as you keep your pants on. <laughs> yeah, this isn't CNN. <laughs> right. It's, it's time now for the Hershenfelds. Dr. Philip Hershenfeld is an actual Freudian psychoanalyst, the real deal. And Ethan Hershenfeld looks like a million dollars. You look like a movie star tonight. Um, something about the lighting. I had a haircut and the lighting is it's making my uh, temples look. You uh, look like a leading man tonight. <laughs> well, from your mouth to Harvey Weinstein's ears, where he's not in that business. <laughs> but to someone like him who doesn't do the things he did. I, I don't see a character actor today. I see a movie star. You look great. Do you see? Thank you. You look great, too. I feel like um, maybe a rom-com. Would that, could I? Sure. You could be in a rom-com. So some wise man said to me that Sigmund Freud, what? Phobias are a, a what? A wish? What, before it's just we a wish in disguise. Yes. I will give you an example. <clears throat> I have a touch of acrophobia, which means I'm not paralyzed by it, but if I'm, I'm up way up high, and near a very close to a window, I get this sort of sinking feeling in my belly. Me too. I get it too, only it's a little lower than my belly. I can actually feel it in my nuts. This, when is, I'm a, on a, this is a yeah. family, this is a family show, Dr. Benjamin. Uh, yes. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. So <clears throat> I was at the Leaning Tower of Pisa many years ago. When you could still go up. I mean, it's so, it's so long ago that it wasn't leaning. <laughs> <laughs> so what you did was you walked internally up until the last few, you know, goings around. And then you walked out on the outside of the tower on a narrow ledge about this wide with no fence. And a lot of people turned around right at that point, but I didn't. So I walked out there and I was walking around and all of a sudden I had this urge to go wee. <laughs> to pee, so to pee, yeah. to go wee or to fly? To, to fly. Ah. It was kill myself by any means it was to fly and i think that's what the anxiety is about of acrophobia and luckily the flights in italy are always very delayed <laughs> <laughs> let me process this for a second a phobia can be a wish is is based on a disguised Wish. For instance, I knew somebody. I mean, for example, for instance, enough. You got all the for instances. What about me? Okay, okay for instance, give us a for, give instance. A for instance. For instance, all of these, all of these, not exclusively, but predominantly, Republican right wing fundamentalist homophobes. Right. Why are they so afraid of homosexuality? Why are they af so afraid of gay men? Why are they so afraid of transvestites? Uh, reading books to kids because they want to put on heels and 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 go have a big gay romp. I like have this. that wish. Yeah, I that's like what's this. going on there. Yeah. OK, but I have claustrophobia. I, uh -huh. 
What's my wish? Every time I'll tell you what your wish is, because I'll tell and then you can I'll go first. No, no, you go. I have zero claustrophobia. When I'm in an MRI machine, I am so relaxed. And sometimes the technicians say, are you comfortable in there? And I say to them, I am as comfortable as comfortable can be. Why? Because claustrophobia is um, a fear of closed in spaces based on a wish to be in the closed in space. Mama. Your mother's womb. Mama. But since I am consciously desirous of that, I have no claustrophobia whatsoever. My you mean God. because you are aware of the the underlying thing behind it? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right. So I have a fear, I'm being serious here, yeah. of being trapped in an elevator. The claustro oh. that was but is that being going up and down, would that be a, a wish to be my mother's egg? Not the womb, but since it goes up and down to be back in the egg without my father invading. Is, is this an Oedipal to, wish? You'll we'll have to work this out with your analysts. I think it's an Oedipal yeah. wish to go back to my mother's egg without my father. Going? I knew a young woman who could not touch knives. Wait, that sounds like the beginning of a limerick. <laughs> Continue. <laughs> She was married to Burl Ives, I believe. I knew. Uh, yeah, she was married. Okay. <laughs> was one of his several wives. And he why named was it. She, why was she afraid of touching a knife? Because she had a almost conscious wish to stab her parents to death when they were asleep in the middle of the night. Mm. Hmm. And, and, and um, luckily... They were insomniacs. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to do a Lizzie Borden joke. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, that is really fascinating, by the way. I, I had no idea. We've been doing this for a long time now, and this is actually going to help me with my phobias. Maybe. We'll see. Why do I hate foreigners? Why do <laughs> I want to? Why, why am I a xenophobic? What's my that's wish? That's just the spicy. That's just the spicy food. <laughs> what is the wish of a xenophobic? You'll have to figure that out for yourself. You're afraid of Xena, the warrior princess. <laughs> Go ahead. I, I interrupted you. No, I was just going to say many, many people have fear of, of elevators. Many people have it. I have a, a much rarer phobia. I'm afraid of escalators. <laughs> <laughs> Which, no, no. It's 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 almost unheard of. It's a fear of open spaces. Yeah, it's a fear of, of uh, food courts in <laughs> shopping centers. Very interesting. So it's almost summer in New York. It feels like summer. It's going to be in the 80s tomorrow. It's going to be in the 80s. It's Christmas time in the city. And being a lane. Our, our moods get better, don't they, when we're outside dealing with people? And I've noticed nobody's wearing a mask. Right. It doesn't, it doesn't, they've, they've declared this week COVID doesn't exist anymore. It is. Yeah, the emergency. Go ahead, sorry. I know a bunch of people who have had COVID in the past couple of weeks. Me too. But it's not as bad. It's not as bad. I am proud to announce to to both of you and to your audience that all of my all of my diseases are communicable. <laughs> That's what a social guy I am. I just don't go for those ones that are I, I'm generous that way. So if I have it, it's I'm going to give it to you. That's what I'm saying. It's generosity. This is great. This is great. What are you reading, Dr. Hershenfeld? What are you doing to relax? I am reading a really fascinating book called The Wager. It is not about a bet. 
It's about an act. It is a very well researched book about a ship sent out by His Majesty George the Second in about 1840. A whole flotilla of about five ships. Well, George the Third. No, was, George the Second. But George the Third was 1776. So it would have to be. Right. It was before him. Oh, so 1740. Okay. Oh, what did I say? 18. That's okay. But oh, it's, it's 1740. Yeah. So their mission was to go around Cape Horn at the bottom of South America, which is an almost impossible thing to do because the water is rushing back and forth between the Pacific and the Atlantic, and it's freezing, and it's very narrow between Antarctica and Tierra del Fuego, and anything you can imagine happening happened to these people. They ended up shipwrecked. It's a, it's, it's a story of human ingenuity, perseverance, perfidy. Um, it's just a really interesting... Everything I don't have. Okay, there you go. Well, it's, also the, it's also the first instance in history of a successful class action lawsuit <laughs> against a cruise ship company. <laughs> All right, so a lot of things... In well, the yeah, there were also the few survivors of this thing. There were not many. They finally got back to England, and they spent the next bunch of years suing the hell out of each other. Wow. 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 Salino and Barnes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's talk. It's been a big week. By the way, sorry, before we go on, no, go, I go. saw the loneliest, saddest thing maybe I've ever seen with these two eyes. The other day I was driving in Brooklyn, and I saw uh, an advertisement on the side of a bus stop that was just Salino. Oh, they, that's right. Didn't one Barnes, of them, I think Barnes is, they, at first they split up, then one of them died. It was just. And it was a nasty, the, it was a nasty yeah, breakup. Just to I was, see yeah. the, one of those guys on, these are uh, personal injury lawyers, uh, famous for their jingle in New right. York. Anyway. Go yeah. Ahead. It's like going to see Abbott without Costello. Right. You yeah. feel cheated. A lot of uh, ugliness this week. Donald Trump was found. Be uglier. It, it could not be uglier. What are we going to do to CNN? Well, what did you see in the audience? A woman has obviously been raped. And I've I've never witnessed this on a, a news network and coming from a, a president. Forget that he raped her, uh, which he did. The audience's responses to his demeaning her, calling her a whack job, and they laugh openly. It America can no longer say they weren't aware of what the misogyny in the Republican Party or it, it, that there is genuine hatred for women in this country. Well, they could continue to say that they were uh, that they just believe uh, that lying psychopath. Uh, who's running for office again? I saw your your uh, your clip about it, David. So yeah, I, I agree completely. It was hor it's horrific that the audience laughed, and it's horrific. I wasn't aware of it, but why would CNN have allowed the audience to be just his supporters? That seems really asinine and irresponsible, given what we went through six years ago, of all these networks giving him unlimited uh, time and promotion and arguably billions of dollars worth of free advertising. Why would they stack the audience in his favor like that? It's crazy. I, I think I know for reason for, for ratings, period. Of course, that's why. But but it would have been better ratings to have a little bit of a, a scrum in there where the audience at least was half half. Well, I, 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 I think they figured this was better for ratings. And what I would suggest to all of us and all of your audience, David, is that you do what I'm doing, which is writing a letter to CNN that I've been a fan for 30 years, and I pledge never to watch them again, ever. Right. This is Chris Licht, the, the wonder kid who took over CNN a year ago. 
he, I guess, held a meeting the day after and said to his staff, this is great. There, He said, we should be proud of putting Donald Trump on because there's no longer any doubt about what this election is about. And I remember thinking, you don't need to platform Donald Trump for us. To, we saw January 6th. We don't need yeah. to know what. Yeah, we had, we've had, uh, well, some of us have had 45 years of his. Right. Uh, infantile, shameful, sociopathic behavior. We don't need another 30 the, the, minutes of it. Do people for, for, for half the country, this was just a, uh, a, a pregame warm up. Yeah. Yep. I didn't see anything negative in all of this. This is why women don't report sexual assault. This is this is a, a primer in what a woman goes through. Why or at least why you wouldn't go up against Donald Trump. He, he is. Well, uh, I did see E. Jean uh, Carroll, uh, a clip. I saw it on Democracy Now, where she was talking about the fact that the quote unquote, like perfect survivor or the perfect witness against someone in one of these cases, that idea was destroyed by her victory because uh, prior to this, the idea was you had. You had to have screamed. You had to have reported it immediately. You had to have done, jumped through certain hoops. But now she actually got a judgment in her favor without, uh, without fitting into that little box. Right. Uh, so that's good. That's good news. In treating victims of trauma, am I pronouncing it properly? It yeah. It is conceivable that a woman would not be absolutely certain she's being raped until afterwards, right? Because of defense mechanisms, coping mechanisms, misunderstanding. I agree. It could, absolutely, that could happen. Yeah. And reliving it, uh, reporting it to the police, going, taking the, the rapist to court is... Could that actually be wor worse than the rape itself? Certainly it could relive the whole thing. This was quite a brave woman. Truly yes. true. And she has to be appreciated for that. And the hatred for her. There's a genuine hatred for her because she's an independent woman who doesn't need a man smart, stylish, sexy. She would be dismissive of a lot of the men and women who vote for Trump. I think there's a lot of misogyny out in the open now. Which the, also comes from fear. A wish for a woman. Fear of, fear of being rejected by a woman. A lot of these, um, you know, the guy, the latest shooter in Texas, he apparently was a member of some kind of crazy death squad who were out to shoot all the undesirables, which are obviously Jews and immigrants and people of color and women. And so putting guns in their hands as a psychiatrist and you read about Texas. Well, let me ask your colleague. Well, before you ask me, let me ask do the doctor, doctor, as a psychiatrist and as a member of the NRA. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> no, sorry. Go ahead, David. Ask me. Your, your... Well, do you think any of these people have been on the couch? No. I, no, I mean, they've, they've slept on friends' couches. <laughs> so, do you think? No. Do you think when if you go to a shooting range, right. and you what percent? Just it's just guessing. What what percentage of these men do you think have gotten psychological help? Well, if it's at a shooting range in the East 70s and 80s, <laughs> then all of them. 
<laughs> they're on their way to their shrink, but what and else. what is so and what is I mean, it's cliche to talk about men and their penises and their guns. Is it's cliche, but that doesn't necessarily mean it it's inaccurate. I once worked with a guy uh, who was a member of the NRA since childhood. He had, you know, hunted and was a gun enthusiast. He was not a right wing nut. He was very insecure. And the only place he would take his guns was to the shooting range somewhere in Manhattan, actually. And he would get a lot of pleasure against, you know, bang, bang, bang at the target. And it did make him feel good. Now, now this was not a guy who was a threat to anybody else. He was not off the range, but he was anxious. And, and powerless and the, the, he felt- Powerless in his marriage, totally. Powerless in his marriage. Powerless at work. <clears throat> so you're blaming the woman. <laughs> so the guns gave him a sense of power. Yes. And he was, a, he was a very good shot. Took a lot of pride in it. So this obsession with gun as people become more and more alienated in this country, feeling more and more powerless, some of us are going to gravitate to guns. You know, it's not, oh, sorry, hold on. Can you hold that thought? I was just going to say, it's not, all, yeah, yeah. it's not all a bad thing because among all the weapons you could choose, the gun is the one where you can really use it and remain socially distant. <laughs> <laughs> There's just a much lower risk of infection. Of so, yes. Sorry, what, yeah. Good point. Go ahead, dad. I was going to say something so brilliant. I knocked it out of your head. It would have knocked your socks off. <laughs> and now you can't remember it? Exactly. Well, well, if you, Don't come to me. Don't worry. But with, so the, the men who think... Oh, I know. I was going go to ahead. Say. There was a very interesting article in the op-ed page of the Times in the past week or two that because of COVID... Because of the social wackiness of our country, there are a lot of guys who can't get a date. And this makes them feel alienated and resentful. So when a guy has a relationship with a woman, he feels much more connected to the world. He feels much more satisfied. He's not enraged. He has a little less spending money. <laughs> so, you know, these things are all tied up with one another. Most of the guys who go shooting at people, um, they don't have close relationships with women. They so it's women's fault for these shootings. What's that? It's your, it's the women's fault for these shootings. Well, okay, you that, keep coming back to, back to that. Well, the, the the incels, you know, Steve Bannon tapped into that back in 2015 when mm -hmm. he was isolating Trump. You, you find these chat rooms with involuntary celibate men. You get their anger and then you channel it into racism and is is anti I've heard anti-Semitism called a sickness. Racism is a, is a sickness. Misogyny, sickness, a mental illness. Is racism a, a mental illness? Is, sec, is misogyny a mental illness? I've heard anti-Semitism described as a mental illness. I don't know if it fits the bill as a mental illness, but it's a mental mechanism to irrationally solve certain problems. Okay. And the individual is undergoing. For example, it, it routinely involves projection. I am not bad. 
that group over there, they're the terrible people. Right. I'm not greedy. They are greedy. Right. Right. So, so that's a pathological defense. OK, let me ask you a difficult question that I wasn't sure I wanted to ask you because I didn't send you the study. But the, Can the you make it a multiple choice. Or sure. Is it's going to be sure. open ended. OK, they, they've debunked the, the uh, Center for American Progress has debunked the talking point that gun violence is caused by mental illness. And there was a, a, a big report that came out in September, and I apologize for not sending it to you. The, the study showed that if you were to look at most mass shooters, they didn't uh, exhibit uh, the symptoms of mental illness, that, that their, 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 uh, their shooting sprees were not related to some kind of psychosis, which goes against everything Greg Abbott and the Republicans are saying. Yeah. That it's, you know, we have to cure mental illness. I can't imagine, and I think it's because I don't really understand what the definition of mental illness is. I can't imagine somebody shooting up a mall and not being clinically mentally ill. No, that's not correct. So you, so in other words, you can shoot up a mall and not be clinically. Yes, you can have some distorted ideas that not, that most people would not agree with, but that by itself does not constitute mental illness. That's incredible because you it it sounds so comforting. To hear Republicans say it's not a gun problem, it's a mental health crisis. Well, that's why they say it, because they don't have to do anything about guns. Right. So why aren't we correcting this? Why, why aren't the Democrats, why aren't, why isn't the psychiatric community correcting Greg Abbott and Ted Cruz and the NRA and saying, we're sorry to break it to you, but you don't understand what mental illness is. Well, this study right. is correcting that thinking. I don't think this is the only such study. <clears throat> and by the way, the Democrats have not been so excellent in their approach to these things. And the psychiatric community has not. And I also have to, uh, on behalf of the Pretend psychiatric community. <laughs> we've 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 done a terrible job. Well, well, okay. <laughs> what are you going to do now? Okay, now that you brought it up. Well, I could write a book about it, but it'll be all made up. <laughs> the and pretend psychiatric community. There should be an organization. The pretend yeah. psych. That there are a lot of people who pretend to be psychiatrists, the, who give advice. The and pretend, the American, the APPA, the American Pretend Psychiatric Association. You should form an actual association and I would join it because I love giving people advice. Okay, well, the do the do's are not cheap. <laughs> it's such a great idea. The American Pretend Psychiatric Associate, APPA, and you can get yeah. a card that yeah. that says you're a pretend psychiatrist. Yeah. That's so funny. And then there'll, there'll be a journal. <laughs> uh, what is mental illness? Obsessive compulsive? Is If you're like, what is the definition of a mental illness? If somebody says I'm mentally ill, what does that mean? Um, it's it's a it's a combination of confusion, delusion, and contusion. <laughs> so if you have confusion and delusion, and then you get hit in the head, that's <laughs> that's mental illness. What what is if if you were to look it up? What is a mental illness? Okay, Let's here's the deal. Go on. We, 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 we all have, let's say, let's just take one 
let's take anxiety for example we're all we're all pro, we're all mammals most of us and we're all prone to get nervous and to get worried about things this is evolutionarily programmed and it's healthy but at a certain point it slips beyond where it's helpful and it becomes it becomes detached from what's really going on around you and and that's um you, you know what that's not mental illness that's just a symptom right that's just anxiety so what is mental illness we do not know again we in the pretend <laughs> community we do, we do <laughs> and we need to do a better this, job this is one of the many things we just do not know because we <laughs> do I, not I, have degree you should have a conference of all of your members <laughs> and come up with a definition. Yeah. Well, I have, you know, worldwide conferences every year. So, so there's, you can have a complex. Now, a complex would be, um, again, I'm guessing here, but that would be like a, a bunch of symptoms put together. So then you have this complex of symptoms, but that's also not necessarily mental illness. Mental illness would be when it's just it, it rises to the level of what's called mashugana. <laughs> like if you if you if you got to the point where you're like that guy is mashugana, uh, that's mental illness or off his rocker. Uh -huh. Those are those are moments when you know it's reached that level. But right. until then, it's just you know he's got his tsuris. right? So somebody who is depressed, it could be that's depression a mental can rise to the level. You can have a psychotic level of depression. That would be mashugana. But just being depressed. Well, what's is, the difference is, between psycho de depression and psychosis? If, okay, let me explain this, Do doctor. Let me take this one. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 actually, you you should take it. You should. This take is it. like we're playing doubles. <laughs> <laughs> I got that one. Go ahead. <laughs> is, Here's is, my understanding of it. Um, things like obsessional OCD, bad OCD, um, some people call that mental illness. In other words, it's an illness in the mind that seriously affects behavior. And, and, um, mood and, and all sorts of things. Right. That's one type of mental illness. Other people can find mental illness to a degree of seriousness where thinking is really disturbed, like delusions, for example. So you can have depression with delusions, and that's a psychotic depression. I see. Um, so I don't think mental illness is, you know, it's not such a scientific term. Aha. So it turns out I was right. <laughs> we don't know what it is. <laughs> You're always right. Come on. Give me a break. What uh, we have to wrap it up. What are you reading, yes. Ethan? And by the way, you should go get eight by tens taken. This is your okay. look. They usually, this okay. is a great look for you. OK, thank you. Uh, I have a. Uh, a friend who's a photographer. We were going to do it in May, so it's May. So we will do that. This it's is a good, a good idea. look um, for you. Thank you. Um, oh, um, Ludlow Blunt. Ludlow, like the street, Ludlow Blunt. My friend Russell is the barber there. You can see him in one episode of Boardwalk Empire where they shot it in his shop because he has a beautiful shop and he has a great mustache. So he appears, he's giving um, Arnold Rothstein, I think he's giving him a shave in one of the scenes. Hmm. But anyway, that's and Arnold that's is plug. shaving points, I believe. Yes. And that's a plug for uh, he gave me this nice haircut. Russell at Ludlow Blunt. He's he's fantastic here in Williamsburg. What am I reading? You know, it's it's just it's really shameful. I've been reading. Um, I've been reading emails, parking tickets. <laughs> How's your uh, garbage can? The garbage can. Well, we have. Have, uh, have you update. used it? The garbage can has now we got one from the city and then the guy who takes care of the uh the recycling for the building very nice guy he basically was like i'm going to be moving this across the street because this is going to be a disaster in the summer so now it's still on our corner but it's in front of a shop 
So they uh, moved. It took you 25 years to get a garbage can. Yeah. Now we've moved it across the street because it turns out it's a nightmare if you just have one. On a corner, you need four of them. Come on, Mayor Mayor Adams, if you're watching, let's get this together. We need hundreds of more garbage cans. And why? So what, we, what's the disaster that's going to happen? I didn't get. Oh, that. Well, the disaster is that people play Jenga with their garbage. They pile it till it's full, then they keep piling it, and then it falls, and then it turns the area around the garbage can into just a total dump. Okay. Yeah. So you got no garbage cans are better than one. It turns out, uh, yeah, paradox. And it took you 25 years to learn that. Yes. Yeah, I'm going to solve this riddle by 2098. Why can't they just put more? What, what is the problem? Why is it so I think what they do is they think, okay, garbage can, yeah, that's not that expensive. But they think of it in terms of payroll. Like how many union sanitation guy man hours is this going to now cost to have this thing picked up several times a week? I so see. each can in their budget, I believe each can is several hundred thousand dollars. And the rats don't, on. the rats don't eat enough of the, the garbage. The rats are loving it. The rats are loving it. They're just, they are, they're winning. The rats are winning. <laughs> Can I say a final word? Yes, please. To please. everybody out there in radio land, Trump really might win again. And if he does, you're going to be kicking yourself. Why didn't I do more? Well, now is the time to do more. Whatever you think the more is, talking to a neighbor, making a donation. I mean, there are all sorts of creative things you can think of doing. Because, yeah, yeah. you know. I can't imagine Joe Biden debating Trump without Trump mopping the floor with him. I mean, Trump just keeps getting better at lying. I got, I, I have a line to somebody high up in Biden's staff. And I asked this person to transmit this notion that every single day from now till the election, Biden should sit down maybe for half an hour with some expert or other who's going to just pepper him with questions. What do you think of this, Mr. Biden? What do you think of that? Why do you think that happened? Because I think the stand, maybe they're doing it already. I hope so. But the standard way to prepare is to give people lots of stuff to read. That's too passive. You don't learn so much from reading. But if you are forced to engage your mind and answer questions and then be corrected if you're wrong. That's a much better way for information to sink into your head. The terrifying I I thank you for that. The terrifying thing is I thought Caitlin Collins over at CNN did exactly that. I think she was peppered and prepared. It doesn't matter because then it, it's just a matter of he said, she said, who can right. say it louder? Yeah. I'm not I'm not in the pessimistic camp at this point. Right. Uh, I think we have there's a lot of time and I, I'm going to encourage people again. Thanks for that push, doctor. I'm going to encourage people to go to movement.vote, www.movement.vote. That's a group, group MVP that works. That was very effective in Georgia, as presidential in Georgia, all over grassroots. Check them out. Movement.vote. Movement.vote, not yes. movement.com. Uh, movement.com, movement.vote. Okay. I will do that tonight. Get moving. Movement.vote. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Pick a restaurant, Ethan. That's your God job. God bless. Okay. okay. Thank you. Toodaloo. Goodbye. Bye. Bye-bye. You're listening to The David Feldman Show, you happy, self-actualized hump.